Okay, see chemistry, we're back. We're going to talk about using units to calculate and calculating percentages. But first of all, I would like to take and give you a couple sites that you can go to practice your significant figure in operations. These sites right here are pretty awesome and amazing and will give you a lot of practice. I know I said a, that they were on the blog, but just to make sure, I wanted to make sure I put them up here. Um, sites 1, 2, and 3 just quickly help you with significant figures. Um, operations of significant figure practice is number 4, and then you can quiz yourself and see how well you do down there at the bottom. Um, I know a lot of you are, struggle with significant figures and scientific notation, so use those. So, dimensional analysis, that's just fancy words for converting, keeping track of the units. So let's do some dimensional analysis so it sounds fancy. So let's take a look at this one. How many liters are in 45.7 centimeters cubed? We're going to have to do some conversion factors or, how, or know some um, ratios. So let's look at what we do know. If we look up, we can find a couple conversion factors that are very helpful. One of them is 1 centimeter cubed is equal to 1 milliliter. We also can find that there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. Okay, so let's start always with what you're given. 45.7 centimeters cubed. And I like to use um, this form instead of going this times this divided by this times this. The, the cross here just means that, that what you've got right here and here is what that represents. So you don't have to keep doing all these parentheses and that. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we have centimeters. We want to get rid of centimeters. So we're going to put centimeters cubed here on the bottom. And I look up above and look at my two convert, um, equal things and find that if I have one centimeter here, then I have one milliliter that it's equal to. So then I can cancel out centimeters. And now I'm in milliliters. So I'm going to go for the next conversion because I want to get to liters. I want to get rid of milliliters. It's going to go on the bottom. Whatever I want to get rid of goes on the bottom. Whatever I want to go to goes on the top. I want to get to liters. So my conversion that has milliliters and liters is right above. There's 1,000 milliliters in one liter. And this time I'm going to cancel out milliliters. Now I just times through the top divide by parentheses times through the bottom, close parentheses. Basically taking 45.7 divided by 1,000. Okay, in doing that you should end up with 0 0.0457 liters as my answer. Okay, so all we've done is to keep track of the units. Okay, let's look at another um, problem where if I was in a car that had only a metric speed shown as 8.98 kilometers per second on the freeway with a speed limit of 75 miles per hour would I get a ticket for speeding? So we're going to need to know some conversions. So here are some of the conversions that I would need to be able to do this conversion. The first thing that I want to do is I want to set up the conversion with what I was given. And I was given that I was going 8.98 kilometers per second. And that's the first thing that I want to set up. And I want to use my factor label again. So I look up here and I can work with one or the other. It doesn't matter um, which one I work with first. So I want to work with the one that you're probably less familiar with first, which is the kilometers. And there's one conversion with kilometers. So I'm going to take that conversion and I want to get rid of kilometers so it's going on the bottom and I want to go to miles and it's going on the top. So in my conversion I have one kilometer is equal to 0 0.621371 miles. Now I can take and cancel out kilometers. I have got miles on the top because that's what I wanted. Now I need to get hours on the bottom, and right now I've got seconds. So, on this one you have to reverse, because seconds is on the bottom, I'll put what I want to get rid of on the top, which happens to be the seconds here. And I want to get to hours, but I can't get there 
straight away. I can go to minutes and then from minutes to hours. So there are six there are sixty seconds in one minute. From there I can take and I can cancel out seconds. And I do one more conversion and this time I want to get rid of minutes, so I put minutes on top and I want to go to my final one which is hours on the bottom and I know in one hour there are 60 minutes and now I can cancel my minutes out and I'm left with miles per hour which is the units that I wanted up here. Now I take and I times to the top divide through the bottom close parentheses there's only ones on the bottom so it's not a big deal. Go ahead and times that through Okay, so I got this number on my calculator. I'm, if I'm going that fast, the policeman's going to have a hard time pit, catching me. But that's okay. We're going to take it and go with that. So I'm going to take and put it in the correct significant figures. I had three to start with, so I need to have three to end with. One, two, three. Look at the next one and round up. Remember, I'm going to have to have placeholders to hold that place. So those two last ones are going to be placeholders. And then don't forget the units. we got miles per hour. And I don't know a car that goes that fast, but we're going to pretend. So there we go. Definitely I would get a ticket if they could find me. Okay, so here's another one. How many ounces are in 3.4 kilograms? These are some of the things that you'll need, some conversions, to figure that out. So again, set up your factor label with what you're given, 3.4 kilograms and put what you want to get rid of on the bottom, which is kilograms, and what you want to go to on the top. Well, I can't go straight to ounces, but I've got a conversion here that goes from pounds to ounces, so I want to go to pounds first. Okay, so there are, from the conversion up here, 0 0.453592 kilograms in one pound. At this point, we can cross out kilograms. Now I'm going to use the second conversion here to go from pounds to ounces. I want to get rid of pounds, goes on the bottom, and that's one pound. And I put what I want to go to, which is the 16 ounces on the top. And this time, pounds cancel out, and I get my answer. Now remember, times through the top, then divide parentheses, close parentheses on the bottom. Go ahead and do the calculations. Okay, from my calculator, this is the calculator answer I get. 119.9315685. We call this calculator vomit if you just give it to me like that. We had two significant figures in when we started. We should end with two. Remember, look at the third. It will round up but it is a bigger number so I need to keep the places so I'm going to report one two zero and what are the units on that well they're ounces and I, that's what I would report now you've got many more um, examples and problems in your book that you can look at there are several um, more videos on YouTube if you want to look at dimensional analysis um, let's go into your next section, which is calculating percents. Okay, we're into percents. Now, percent basically, I love to use pizza for this just because kids seem to get it. So here I have a pizza. It has a total of eight slices. Now, you'll notice one of the slices is gone. So I want to find out what percent is left. of the pizza. So to do that, that means there's seven pieces left out of a total of eight, and then you just times it by 100. So what percent was left? If you did that on your calculator, you should have ended up with 87.5 percent was left. Now how much was gone then? Well, eaten was 12.5 percent. We'll be using this a lot. How much, what percent 
yield? That would be the percent yield. What's the percent error? That would be how much is eaten. So that makes it real easy. Just remember on the bottom is the whole and the top is the part. Okay, so this is an application part of percent besides percent yield and percent error. We could also use it um, to find out how much something um, we have. So if the human body is 70% water, how much water is in a 250 pound male? Well remember the percent is equal to the part over the whole times 100. So if I rearrange this equation and solve it for part, the part is going to be equal to the percent times the whole divided by 100. So we're going to plug that in. To find the part, we're going to take the percent, which is 70, times by the 250 and divide it by 100. Go ahead and do that calculation. If you did the calculation, you should have come up with 175 pounds. That's a lot of water. Now, if we were true to our significant figures, that actually should be reported as 180. Because we only have two significant figures, assuming the 70 is 2. Okay. Okay, here's some more with uh, percent. Say that you took a test. And the test, you ended up getting... Um, 36 out of 54 and you want to know your percent most of you know how to do this you just go ahead and say 36 divided by 54 times by 100 right go ahead and figure the, your, your percent okay you should have come up with 60 6.67 percent how'd you do that would be your percent yield of the test. Okay, To get your percent error, you just go 100 minus 66.67. In other words, how much did you get wrong, your percent error, and you would have that. Go ahead and figure it out. Did you get that your percent error was 33.33%? .33 So your yield is how much you, your part that you ended with. Your error is how far off from the hole that you were. We're going to be using those in lab a lot. So when, percent, when you talk about percent, there's many ways that we can use it. But it's just as simple as finding your percent on a test. Okay? We'll see you in class.